So here we are in the famous Straight Blast gym. How welcome, you doing, man? Welcome, Great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me, dude. I obviously bumped into you last year. We didn't really get to connect. Yeah. So here I am. I thought I'd go get in touch and see if you can put, put me through a kind of you know MMA-style fitness session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, give you a feel of what it's like to be in a competitive MMA fight. So uh, let's Thank have a little walk through and... Uh, Make a cage fire out of me, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> So it, no shoe uh, gym, so everybody leaves their shoes here and then yeah. we walk on through. Um, this was actually the first cage that I owned, it was a very small cage. It's what I got Connor ready for, for his uh, UFC debut right. five or six years ago. And then uh, when we eventually got the big cage, which I'll show you in a, mo in a moment, we turned this into a shop. I love it, yeah, the shop. So we swapped it to the, uh, the shop to gone. For, from face to face, it's 18 feet, right. so it's actually quite small. This is very rarely used. It might be used on small regional shows, okay. but the USC uh, cage, the full-size cage, is 30 feet, wow. so almost twice the size. So when Connor went from fighting in this, it was like fighting in a telephone box into fighting in the cage, which is a, a much bigger space. Yeah, more more room. And that's uh, Young Curry there, one of our open comers. Hello, mate. You a name for the future. A name for the future. No, he will be. He yeah. will be. For see sure, you, he will. See you in a couple of years, mate. Good luck, mate. How long did you have the name Straight Blast Gym? Was that from the start? So I was originally, I had the worst name in the world. I was called The Real Fight Club when I was 18 and I thought that was cool. And I had 20 members and we all just used to put our heads through walls and do stupid stuff. And then in uh, 2001, I fought in South Africa and I fought a member of Straight Blast Gym International. Okay. And I, I, I just hit it off with his coach after the fight. I brought him here the following year, 2002, 16 years ago. And I was Straight Blast Gym Ireland since then. So 16 years SBG Ireland. What I loved about the documentary and the tourist was like the, the self-belief when he said like, you know, he knew he was going to be a champion and yet, you know, that kind of self-confidence and belief is so, the mindset is just as important as the physical side of fighting, isn't it? Like to be, believe in yourself like that. Yeah, and it's a incredible. lot of fighters say that. A lot of fighters say the mental side is, is more important than the physical side. And then you ask them, okay, how much do you train the mental side? And they don't. So if it, mental is a bigger part than physical, you should be training mental yeah. even more than the physical. How do you train mental then? How, how do you do that? You know, there's simple techniques, there's visualization techniques that uh, Connor was doing before I'd heard of anyone else doing them. Like, he, would, he could tell me when he was going to fight, he knew exactly what was going to happen long before it happened because he had done it a thousand times in his head. He had warmed up in backstage, he had heard the crowd, he had smelt the arena, he had seen the audience, he, he would really immerse himself in, wow. the, in, the, in the fight night. So by the time fight night came along, where a lot of people do maybe been training in kind of a quiet gym for eight or 12 weeks, and then they walk out to 15,000 people and they get, they get shocked. He used to walk in going, yeah, this is my thousandth time doing this. Yeah, just, and you know, there's been plenty of experiments done to show that your, your brain doesn't really know the difference between you imagining doing something and you physically doing something. So he was getting a lot more training in than the average person because yeah. he would do his physical part, which realistically you can do two or three hours a day but he was tripling that by doing the mental side. He really? was visualizing techniques, so visualizing focused, fights, yeah, so just focused. super focused, you know. He'd, like he said, he, 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 was, he got to the stage where he wasn't able to go see a movie because 10 minutes into the movie, he's thinking of a, a wrestling sequence yeah. or something, so. Oh, so he literally even plays out, if he's grabbed a certain way, he can play out the, how he's gonna get out of that move sort of thing. Like. Yeah, you know, some guys come in, they get caught with a move and they put it out of their head and they come in the next day and he might get caught again. If he got caught with a move, trust me, he was 10 hours at home thinking about that, Amazing, and yeah. messaging me and looking at videos and figuring out, come in the next day with, with a solution. So that's, yeah. and that's what you need if you want to separate yourself. So he's not just a physical, but he's a smart fighter as well. He's a smart. He's you, a, you, you can't get good at this sport with just brawn. Yeah. It'll get you to a certain level, but then you're going to meet guys who are good physical athletes and high fight IQ. And yeah. that he's got that nice combination of both. Yeah. So, so how, how long, on average, it takes someone who comes in and says, I want to be a fighter to like them get into that level? Is it like, we're talking five, six, seven years to get to that that, that that sounds about yeah. right, you know, that sounds about right. Now, you're gonna get guys that are coming in and you might show them an exercise and they're gonna come in the next day, they've spent all night doing it, you know, and then you can, right away you can see, okay, this guy's got a certain mindset. Yeah, he he's he's gonna fast track it. Um, but yeah, I think five, six years yeah. is, is a good for skill development. Amazing, so what, what to you, like what makes, because obviously MMA, involves so many different sports, yep. what, makes the all, what makes the perfect fighter for you, do you reckon? Yep, great question. I'm always thinking about it. And what I can, the only thing I can think of is the real answer is that, uh, I, I looked it up, it's a noun, stick to itiveness stick to itiveness Yes, and it basically means you have a tenacity and a perseverance for showing up day in, day out, day in, day out. It's kind of like what you do. You're not gonna, you're not gonna show somebody, you're not gonna give someone like a diet and a six week training program. You're, 
it's a lifestyle, yeah, you know, and, and yeah. mixed martial arts has to become a lifestyle. There's no point coming in here with, with a big story and you, you're going to do this and you go crazy for a week. And then week two, I see you twice. A week three, I see you once. You know, you're just, you don't have that sick to it Yeah, yeah. To I just show up day in, day out. And, you know, again, obviously Connor's a big name out here. I use him for examples. When he blew up on the, uh, on the, on the UFC stage with his, with his UFC debut, people didn't see the seven, eight years before that, yeah. where he was showing up in a cold, damp gym, day in, day out, twice a day, every day, never missing a session, putting in the hours, putting in the hours. You know, Muhammad Ali used to say, like, long before I danced under those lights, um, there's, you know, hours and hours of road work, hours and hours of gym work. So it's, it's a certain mindset. Yeah. A lot of people want the rewards. They want to step out in front of 15,000 people. They want the, the, the accolades. But are you, are you going to print that yeah. five, six, Consistent, seven, yeah. eight, nine years consistent That's work? what I loved about the documentary, the archive footage. I just thought, I love the fact that they had all that old footage from when he was training back there. Like just Because you never knew where it was going to go. But to see all that, he really, you know, putting in the work and living at home with his mum. It's just, I really, I just love it as a success story. And like I said, I don't know. I've had a thousand fighters in the last 20 years. And there's just a handful that have that just day in day out, just the grind as we yeah. call it yeah, and yeah. it's it's not easy people want the people want the fame they want the quick results but i, I don't think there's any uh, any any good skilled based where do you want to learn the piano where you want to learn how to box you want to learn how to dance any of these like heavily skilled activities we need to put in the hours yeah. there's yeah. no escape in hours Absolutely, yeah i keep the guys uh first set of gloves oh that's for brilliant you debut so that was connor in uh, his big uh, debut in stockholm uh, another one of my guys, Gunnar Nelson from Iceland, that was his, his debut gloves. He fought in, um, in the UK. This is a pretty cool uh, uh, mural up here. This was, um, was actually an Irish kid, Will, uh, Will, from, uh, Will Sliney from Cork, and he's a, a Spider-Man uh, artist. Right. He he's actually works on the Marvel comics, oh, right. and I'm a massive Spider-Man fan. I'm a lot more buff in, a, in cartoon form than, a, than in real life. <laughs> These are all kind of my original fight team that started with me about 15 years ago. That was it, like I had eight or nine fighters. Now I have 68 fighters and 750 members. Okay, yeah, and, and it started from that. Amazing, man. What, what a journey. <laughs> it's been so What's journey. next? So obviously, you know, Connor's amazing. At the end of that documentary, like, wow, you've achieved this amazing thing together. But what's, what's your next kind of ambition personally for yourself? You know, I, I want to replicate it. Um, it was great uh, going with Connor and winning a belt, but I feel if we just win one belt, then it was an anomaly. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of great fighters here. There's no reason why we can't win more UFC belts, more Bellator belts, more, more you know, recognized world title belts. Yeah. Yeah. That's my goal. It's huge. So here we go. So, that, Here's so the, when, uh, when, when they fight in UFC, this is the standard size? There's the, that's I the, cannot believe how big it is. It's the first um, UFC size cage in Europe, this one. And it's the, this is the actual fence in the sun there, yeah? That's, that's the fencing that yeah. they use. It's starting to, as you can see, it's, it's kind of starting to belly out a yeah. little bit. But getting, because so when they're in the corner getting pummeled against that, that can't be nice on the side it's of the head either, nice. can it? That doesn't it's feel good. Nice. It's that, funny. That's painful, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Like, someone's little, weight leaning against yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely not And you're, fun. you know, you're leaning against that. Wow. Yeah. It, it's funny when we, when, when guys start off training here, they want to train in the cage, you know, and they're against the fence, get taken down, but they, they get rubbed. Yeah. And then we start training against the, uh, the, the padded walls a lot more uh, kind. Just getting smashed up against that, that can't, can't be a nice thing. <laughs> it's not the most fun thing in the world. Let's go in and uh, have, a, have, a, have a look around. He bounces up there when he wins, doesn't he? <laughs> He's sitting on the edge of the cage. I can't believe how big it is. Big, how, how big is a boxing ring, like a professional boxing ring? How big boxing that ring be? is about 20 feet. Rope to rope. Right, 20. And we're 30 feet. Yeah. So 50% bigger. A lot, man. And you, they move around a lot, don't they? I mean, when you watch them fight, they are, they're covering a lot of ground as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't believe that. I feel small in here. And when, when you've got a crowd of 50,000 people or whatever, it must be, it must it's feel intense. tiny, yeah. It's this is actually, this is my favorite uh, photo. 20 years uh, training, this is my favorite photo that we ever caught. So this is the, of all the photos yeah, you and Connor ever had, this is your favorite photo? Of what all the photos I've had in, in training, this is my favorite photo. Um, well, the words mean a lot to me as well. I'm always telling my fighters that there's no such thing as talent. It's, it's what you put in. A lot of the guys, they, I think a lot of people, even when they start off, they go, well, what's the point of me putting in all this effort? I'm not talented. But the reality is, talent is the result of hard work. Yeah. And I tell my guys, look, you train every day, twice a day, like Connor did for seven, eight years. And then suddenly you appear on the scene and people see you for the first time. They go, oh, that kid's talented. Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Let's go back eight years yeah, yeah, when he yeah. walked in the gym first. Exactly. And he didn't know how to do everything. Like me in eight years time, we look back at this footage. Exactly. We're going to be like, oh my God, two-time world champion, Joe Wicks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's no talent here. This is hard work. 
This is an obsession. Talent does not exist. We are all equals as human beings. You could be anyone if you put in the time. You will reach the top and that's that. I am not talented, I am obsessed. And then that photo is um, my favorite fight of all time. Connor, uh, Connor versus Nate Diaz too. And a very tough fight, uh, him and Nate, I, I kind of describe them as like Batman and the Joker. They're like, they're like the perfect nemesis, the perfect yeah. opponent for each other. He just don't stop, does that Nate? He just never stops, he never stops. Up. And kind of dropped him a bunch on, of times. Um, I looked on YouTube and it, there was an, it showed the audio that you were talking to in between the rounds and I thought it was amazing. You were just saying like, I mean, what's your voice? I think it is, you're saying recover. I would have been Because Connor's yeah. not saying nothing, is he? He's obviously breathing, but it was nice. And look at that him. face, there, there's yeah. a face that's, he's been through uh, four hard rounds. We're going out to the fifth and final round. Yeah. He's trying to slow his heart rate down. You are. You're well happy, dude. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I get to walk out now, you know. You got to face that man. Yeah. But at this point, you knew he had kind of won because he had taken the rounds, didn't he? Did you he know? was up. I, I, I had him up three rounds to yeah. one at least, um, and that was true on the scorecard. He had, he had so much. He had so much. That Nate Diaz bleed so much. He had so much blood in him when he was just like. He just. If you look under the dictionary, warrior, this is Nate Diaz. Yeah. A picture of him there. He's a, he's a, he's a great fighter. But I love that. I love that quote. You know, it's true. Like. We're all, we're all equals, and he's, you know, he's proved that dedication in anything, you can, you know. Yeah, I'm always telling my guys, you know, people might look at your story now, right now, and go, oh, I want that. What? Give me that in a month. Give yeah. me that kind of following. Give me that, give me that kind of backing. But they don't remember, you know, yeah, not, yeah. when no, you were 18, you were doing your personal training and yeah. getting trains everywhere, getting buses everywhere, and yeah. pushing yourself up at 5 a.m. And it's these kind of background stories I'm always trying to impress upon my guys, you know? That don't, don't look at Connor's situation now and think you're getting it after one fight. It could, might happen in two years, five years, 10 years. Yeah. But if you love what you do, if you're obsessed with it, guess what? The time is going to pass anyway. And, and there you are, you're, you're yeah. going to reach there, you know? Totally, so, man. And Connor certainly ran with it when he got his break. He'd actually quit MMA when he got his call for the UFC. He'd quit a couple of months earlier. Why is that? Stuff was going on in his life, and he was like, yeah, I'm just done. I'm, I'm doing this 10 years. I'm fighting for 500 euros three times a year. You know, what money is that? His girlfriend's driving him around and beat up Peugeot. And then the call came, and he actually was one of my trainers, and he, he wasn't showing up to teach his class. So I'm trying to call him, and he wouldn't answer the phone because he thought I was ringing him to give out to him that he wasn't teaching his class. Right. But eventually, he picks up the phone. I'm like, Connor, UFC, eight weeks, uh, Stockholm, what do you think? You know, I mean, <laughs> you can imagine what you said. Yeah. And then we, we went in there, he first round knockout and... So how are you? How do you get to that? Did they like invite him personally? I mean, how do you get invited into UFC? So, uh, you've, you've got to be getting the wins. You know, on the European circuit, you've got to be, you've got to be beating people. Yeah. And there, were just, there was an online swell getting behind Connor that he was knocking everybody out and around. He was this great personality on the microphone. You know, and that's, to be honest, like to be really, to, to really make it on the professional scene, you have to be able to fight. Don't, don't, don't get yeah. me wrong on that. You got to get the results. But it's no harm having a good personality as yeah. well. You put both of those together, people pay attention. Look, mate, the gym's amazing. What a venue. And the story, you know, your journey as well as Connor's is really inspiring. Not, not just for people who love UFC, but for anyone start, you know, starting a business or just got a vision of whatever, transforming their body. So really think we're going to love the story. What are you going to do with me today? Eh? What are you going to put me through? So um, we're going to do a fight simulation right. based, on, based on MMA style drills and cardio. Um, now I come up with this because sometimes in a training camp with a lot of sparring, you're taking punches and, and getting thrown, your body, gets, your body gets very sore and we need to give the body a rest. Right. So you can try to simulate what the heart and lungs feel in a fight on a treadmill or on a rower. You know, I can get you up to 160, 170, I can hold you there. And that will simulate the cardiovascular needs, but the technique won't be there. The, 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 the punches, the kicks, the moving around on the ground. So I, I come up with this first of all for Connor, so I could, I could work him hard without getting him any injuries or if he was had a sore knee or something, we could work, very closely simulate a fight without taking the knocks and bangs. Yeah, all right. So it's kind of like MMA fitness. That suits me, so I ain't got to get knocked. Because I said, do you reckon he's going to knock me about today? And Dom's like, you're going to give me a slap, leave me with a black eye. Not at all, not at all. Well,